It's ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, good evening, welcome to Core TV News on the R. I am Geft Ogete. Members of the Chibok community in Abuja are not shocked by the latest Boko Haram attack on Dambwa, a town located about 80 kilometers from Medugri, the Borno state capital. A representative of the community says at Friday's sit-out protest of the Bring Back Our Girls group that Boko Haram is almost totally in control of Dambwa and its surrounding areas. I'm sure it was reported here earlier, the attack on Dambwa early this morning. Uh, in it, you know, it was reported that the military tried twice to return to Dambwa after they were dislodged Hello? by the terrorists last week and they failed. They were repelled by the terrorists. The terrorists have taken over the road from Medugri to Dambwa and by extension to Diu. And by extension up to Jos, because for our people in Borno, that's the one of the ways. You cannot pass through Potiskum to Darazo to Bauchi. You cannot pass through Dambua to Biu, to Gombe, and to Bauchi, which is the major link to Jos. Some time ago, there was a fierce firefight between the military and these terrorists between Bauchi and Jos. Now, that is very frightening. And the ring, the evil ring is going round and you know, becoming tighter and tighter and tighter. There is no flight to Medugri. Members of the Bring Back Our Girls movement are not convinced about the federal government's sincerity on the one billion dollars it is seeking for the war against insurgency. They also want the government to withdraw the image laundering contract awarded to a U.S.-based public relations outfit, Lewick political activist. Dino Malaya uh, stated the group's position in an interview with Core TV News in Abuja. What I would just say is that um, we do hope that the presidency will raise this money and use it for the purpose for which um, they've asked that the money be raised. And the president should start first by withdrawing the $1.2 million they are using for image laundry and uh, use it for, for the purpose of rehabilitating um, the parents and the victims of uh, this um, satanic mishap. I do not believe in the transparency of government. This government has failed us in many instances. So I want to believe that um, the rehabilitation of this guy should be driven by the private sector. In a related issue, a public affairs analyst, Dikpo Olayoku, has discouraged the idea of seeking the $1 billion loan to fight terrorism by President Goodluck Jonathan. Olayo Kun says the funds could be generated in Nigeria if leaders set their priorities right and desist from mismanagement of public funds. I think uh, there is a need for them to go and do their mathematics, let them look inward, because by, if you are taking loans, you are mortgaging the future of the current generation. Because this loan will be repaid maybe years back after this government might even have left the scene and Nigerians that are coming will be made to pay this loan back. I think uh, they shouldn't go for this loan. Let them look inwards, harness resources within and we'll be able to raise this money. After all, they have just uh, uh, left this man off the hook, Abacha's son, because they said there's a promise that the money that they looted, that they will be able to bring it back to Nigeria. We can take from this money from this Abasa loot, there are so many things we can use to raise this 160 billion naira so that we don't go for this foreign loan. Alleged serial fraud star Fred Ajudwa has lost his bid to stop his trial for allegedly defrauding a former chief of army staff, Ishaya Bamayi, of 8.39 million US dollars between November 20, 2004 and June 2005. The Lagos Division of the Court of Appeal dismissed Ajudwa's application challenging the competence of the charge and the jurisdiction of the Lagos High Court. Ajudwa, who was arranged on a 14-count charge of obtaining by false pretense 
has filed notice of preliminary objection in which he argued that the proof of evidence did not disclose any case against him. Justice Atinuke Ikbaye had dismissed the objection, but Ajudwa subsequently appealed against the decision of the trial court. At the hearing of the appeal, he contended that the lower court, when it held that he could be tried under the Repealed Advance Fee Fraud and Other Related Offences Act, 1995. He also maintained that the proof of evidence did not support the charge, but in a unanimous ruling, the Court of Appeal affirmed the decision of the trial court that the charge was competent. In spite of opposition from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Nigeria on the verge of having an autonomous financial intelligence center. This was after the Senate passed the bill setting up the center this week before going on recess. Although the FCC is opposed to an autonomous center, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Financial Crimes says it's a well thought out move. EFCC, which by law, is an enforcement agency, is also saddled with the responsibility of collecting information, which necessarily can be useful to other agencies. If something is in my pocket and you ask me for it, I can only bring it out at my own uh, discretion. Are you, do you agree with me? Good. So before now, Information at the disposal of EFCC were only accessed by the agencies at the discretion of the EFCC. The strike embarked upon by the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria is already beating harder. The development has left courts across the country under luck and deserted. Luashi Adeguke visited some courts in Lagos and returned with this report presented from our studios. The situation at the Lagos High Court and the Federal High Courts both in Ikeja tells the story as activities remain paralyzed following the ongoing strike by the judiciary workers. The union is protesting the federal government's non-compliance with the orders of the court on financial autonomy and independence of the judiciary. A Lagos-based lawyer, Justice Ihuegbu, says the industrial action is wrongly timed. It's so unfortunate in Nigeria that uh Nigerians will wake up one day and discover that one body or the other is on strike without uh, adequate notice, without adequate information, without carrying people along. No, does it mean the union do not have a public relations department that should satisfy people? At least the, 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 the doctors uh, even went on a warning strike before embarking on this one, but there was nothing such. And my problem is that these are the two two major key sectors in the in, in the country, the the, the the medical association and the judiciary. And once these two bodies are dormant, the country can move forward. He had that the strike has paralyzed activities in courts across the country. As I speak to you to now, so many people are lavishing in jail. People that are supposed to have given bail. What are people that have critical condition in various cells and prisons that need court order to be taken away from there and all the rest. All everything is gone there. It's affecting the poor masses directly. Because when you embark on strike, definitely you want to achieve a purpose. You, 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 you have a target. Now, your target is it to punish the masses or to reach the government? If you want to reach the government, it's not by punishing the masses. The Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, however, insists the strike is its last option to press home their demands. Nigeria's prison authorities have promoted over 50 officers and men across the country. Some of the newly promoted officers were decorated with new ranks at the ceremony in Abuja. Comptroller General of Prisons, Zakari Ibrahim, used the opportunity to charge the promoted officers to rise up to the contemporary security challenges in the country. Per Samuel reports. These officers and men of the Nigeria Prison Service have been found worthy in the discharge of their duties. They have come from all parts of the country to be decorated with new ranks in Abuja.
for this newly promoted assistant controller of prisons in charge of Zone D in Mina. There is a lot more to be done in the next assignment. As the society is evolving, crime is also evolving. Therefore, I see this promotion as a call to duty, as a call to spur me to explore the avenues and the techniques, modern techniques on handling crime, so that those of our brothers that are unfortunate to have gone uh, against the law will be brought to rectitude. The prison service has several challenges, but this officer is sure that the service has what it takes to overcome them. Quite a number of challenges because promotion goes with you know, greater responsibilities to ensure you know, greater security in, the, in my zone, in the prisons within my zone. So all these things are challenges. I know more is required of me, more is expected. And I need to arrive to the occasion and to ensure that I, I do not disappoint. As prison authorities continue to make sure that inmates are secured in the prisons, they also want those in charge of the judiciary to enhance speedy delivery of justice. Pai Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. The activities of the youth wing of the All Progressives Congress, otherwise known as State Boys in Oshun State, have been causing more ripples between the ruling APC and its major opposition, the PDP. The APC claims the State Boys have been law-abiding, even as the PDP insists that the group is another code name for armed thugs of the ruling party. Rashid Rashid took up the party chieftains in Oshubo and filed him to support. As arguments rage over their status and activities, the fact remains clear that state boys are actually in existence in the state and also card carrying members of the All Progressives Congress. The deputy governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Adejari Balido, branded the state boys as thugs used by the APC in perpetrating violence. But the chairman of All Progressives Congress in Oshun, B. Adelowa, however, countered Adejari's position. The incumbent government is retracing the state boys EU. There is nothing like state boys other than Togri, and we will not allow that to happen. The state boys are just youth wing of the party. They are part, they are not, they are not, they are not armed with anything. They, they follow us to Kori rallies to be part of the rally and as youth wing of the party. Again, Adija fires another salvo, accusing the APC of stockpiling arms and ammunition for use by state boys during the August 9 governorship election. This obviously did not go down well with Adilowo. They are still piling hams. They have brought hams into this state to be used by state boys. And they uh, will not take kindly to that. We pretend as if we don't know anything. But by the time security people arrive, we will let them know we know what is going on. The state boys are not armed at all. They are, they are not stocking fire, fire any, any ammunition. The police will go and investigate. The severity of the verbal war is not lost even on the ordinary political observer, as Belo vowed to use all means to check the activities of the boys, but Adelawa hits back and asks the PDP to look inwards. Our own is to make sure we try to locate where they are and we point to them, the security agents. So if you hear hills and cries thereafter that they are arresting people, don't just harass people and intimidate people unless they become my allegations. Go to the houses, check if you see anything of them, then you can make a report. Nobody, nobody's going to find anything because that is what they do on their own. As the brickbats continue between the two heavyweights, the governorship candidate of Alliance for Democracy, a former National Assembly member, Sunday Fajibi, says peace in Oshun is being threatened by both APC and the PDP and they must be called to order. One has gone to train his talks in Cuba. It's well known. The other one has trained locally. They bought guns and stored guns. I'm a marksman myself. I'm a licensed arms carrier. We know what is going on. Was here in the was here. They vandalized his instrument. They killed two people. They went to Ife. They killed five people. When are we going to stop all this? I'm, I'm concerned because they killed my senior brother like that in uh, 2003 when I was going for the election. And when are we going to stop all this? As clock watch ticks towards August 9, security in the words of the power that will be tightened ahead of the governorship poll. Rashid Rashid, Paul TV News, Oshobo. As the proposed local council creation in Ekiti State continues to generate heat, the Ekiti State Independent Electoral Commission has fixed a date to conduct referendum on the issue. 
The leadership of the commission addressed journalist in Adoikiti. Rashid Rashid again has reports. Defying protests that have greeted the creation of additional 18 local council development areas from the existing 16 local governments in the state, the Ekiti Independent Electoral Commission has set out its guidelines for the conduct of the constitutionally required referendum in the 16 local governments where the new local councils will be carved out. We are not to entertain these ones, but to forward them to the House of Assembly where they are going to take the final decision. It is not for CA to look into the agitations. The limit of our work is to do the referendum. Law mandates CEC to conduct referendum to ask the people whether they are in favor or against the creation of additional local government. Adelusi explains that the commission has trained ad hoc staff for the smooth conduct of the referendum. Concerning the case, even though no information was uh, given to us from the plaintiff, we knew that the judgment had been cited in our favor. And that's what we are acting upon. The Equity State PDP leadership thus expresses dismay on the development. This check is not known to law. And if they are now doing anything, it's an act of illegality. We have also gone to court again, stopping this recklessness. It's an illegal action, illegal activity. That will not stand the test of time. Surely, the last may not have been heard of the drama surrounding the local council creation. Rashid Rashid, Paul TV News, Adoikiti. The Director General of the Bureau of Public Enterprises, Benjamin Dickey, has urged Nigerians to be patient with government in its attempt at increasing power supply in the country. Dickey spoke with journalists against the backdrop of complaints that the former sector has not recorded sufficient difference even after it has been handed over to private investors. The power sector was handed over to private investors November last year with the aim of improving electricity supply to boost socio-economic development. The BPE bus also urged labor unions to desist from blaming the generation and distribution companies and the delay in getting the desired result in the sector. He, however, noted that vandals had blown up gas pipelines supplying gas to power generation stations, but ordered that government was trying to fix the problem. You're watching Core TV News on the hour. We'll take this break. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us. Core TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electionary campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 at 24 hour news station. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Welcome back now to Story Outside Nigeria. Kimon on the plane crash. The United Nations General Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has called for a full international investigation to the Malaysia Airlines disaster in East Ukraine. Ban Ki-moon says there is need for a full, transparent and international investigation. He offered condolences to the families. Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 carrying nearly 300 people from Amsterdam and route Kuala Lumpur crashed earlier in rebel-held eastern Ukraine near the Russian border, with Kiev saying it was shut down in a terrorist attack. U.S. officials say it was shut down by a surface-to-air missile, but it was unclear who fired the weapon. Britain uh, had also called for a UN-led investigation and is seeking an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council to discuss the crisis. In With Ukraine. respect to the Malaysia Airlines disaster today in Ukraine, Ukraine, 
I'm closely monitoring, monitoring the reports along with the International Civil Aviation Organization or United Nations uh, Agency. There is a clear need, a full and transparent international investigation. I offer my deep condolences to the families and loved ones of the victims and people of And with that from United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, we wrap off our news for this hour. Thank you for watching. Join us again. I am Geft Orgete. Good evening.